Hello everyone and welcome to Safety Pilot. My name is Caleb. In today's video, I'm going to give you eight resources that I think every private pilot should know about and should be able to navigate in order to be a successful pilot. These are things that are gonna be very useful as a pilot and as a student training to become a pilot. Uh, the nice thing about these resources, resources I'm showing you is that all of them except the last one are free to use and I think that that fact alone a lot of people don't realize. Um, I'm going to block up the section on the video here so you can kind of click through and see them as we go. Uh, I'm going to be recording my screen here. I got my laptop and I'll be going through them and showing you how to navigate to them and what they're good for as we go. Uh, I'm a flight instructor and I make these videos primarily for my students, but I think they're also helpful for everybody out there. So I hope you learned something from this video and uh, are encouraged coming away from it. With that, let's jump into it. The first thing we're going to look at here is the, uh, the Code of Federal Regulations. Now. The, if you have a FAR AIM book um, that stands for Federal Aviation Regulation slash Aeronautical Information Manual, they're actually two different resources. We're going to cover them both, but you can buy a paper book. A uh, couple, uh, several different companies like um, ASA and Glime um, and others make versions of this where they're, they're taking the Code of Federal Regulations, which is basically the, the lawyer speak of aviation, and they're condensing it down to just what they think you need as a, a pilot studying to become a pilot. And then they're taking a separate thing, which is non-regulatory but advisory, called the Aeronautical Information Manual, and they're putting that in there as well. So that's what you get that big, thick book. Now, you can find all of that for free online, and you can find far more than what they're condensing down. So we're going to look at that now. So coming over here to the computer, I've gone to the Code of Federal Regulations. You can find this just by typing in ECFR um, and then going right here. The Code of Federal Regulations has everything. Like you can see it's got stuff about the president and energy, banks, business, everything. But Title 14 is aeronautics and space. Title 14 of the CFR, called 14 CFR, is also known as the FARs, Federal Aviation Regulations. Don't get caught up in the weeds of all the names. We're, right now, we're looking at, in this block here, we're looking at the FARs, the Federal Aviation Regulations. We care about Chapter 1 as pilots, and then you can see in here that we've got all different kinds of parts and sections and confusion, and you're probably looking at this and saying, this is not what being a pilot is about. You're right, and uh, as a private pilot, you don't have to have very much of this memorized. I wouldn't start memorizing much of this stuff until you're getting up to the commercial or uh, certified flight instructor level, but it's helpful to know that it's all here. As a private pilot, the most useful things we're looking at are the subpart D on airmen, part 61. As a private pilot, I would want, I, as a flight instructor, I would want all of my students to have part 61 memorized. Just know that part 61 is certification for airmen, for pilots. This is gonna cover things like, how do you get a certificate? Um, what about a medical certificate? How long does my certificate last? How do I renew my certificate? What if I want to fly a different type of airplane? Do I need a different type of certificate? If you get any of these questions as a pilot or as a student pilot on a check ride when you're studying, ask from a CFI, and you don't know about certification for me, this is where you're going to go, part 61. There's all kinds of stuff in here. You, see, you can see it's broken up into sections. There's a general section, and then we've got student, recreational, private, commercial, ATP, flight instructors, ground instructors. It's very nicely laid out. You look at this thing, if you pulled up here online, this is something that the FAR AIM book doesn't do for you. You can pull it up here and you can see very easily, okay, I'm a student pilot, I'm gonna go to subpart C, the student pilot section, and I can find things about how to apply to be one, the eligibility, how old do I need to be, all that kind of stuff is in there. All right, great. Another, another good thing in the 14 CFR or the Federal Aviation Regulations is part 91. Part 91 concerns basically general operating rules for the airplane. Um, so these are like basically the laws of the land. These are like your driving rules, but in the air. So right of way rules, what, do you, what equipment do you need to have? What inspections does your airplane need to have? All that kind of stuff. And we can see it's again broken up into sections. The general rules, the flying specific rules. So these are gonna be like airspeed rules and what kind of pre-flight inspections or what kind of things you need to do before you take off. Equipment, special flight, this is gonna be like parachute jumping and glider towing and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then maintenance and that kind of stuff. So we can find all of that stuff in here. All of it is in here. It's a, these are all fantastic resources. If there's something you don't know, this is a great place to go. And again, if you have that paper far aim, you're going to have a lot of this stuff. You're going to have part 61, part 91. But there are other things in here. Um, part 43, for example, that's about maintenance that you might have limited. You might you might run into using a couple times um, and things like that. That you can, you can find everything in here online for free. It's easy to navigate. It's, it's, well, it's well laid out. All right, with that, let's move on to the next resource, which is the AIM, the Aeronautical Information Manual. I just type in AIM Aviation, and it shows up right here, Aeronautical Information Manual, and a 
jump right in. So if you have the far aim book, you have this as well. But look at this, we've got it all in here. And this has this has a lot of things. This has like procedures. How do you talk on the radio? How do you fly a traffic pattern? So if you've ever heard people ask like, oh, when should you turn crosswind in a pattern? Or how do you enter the pattern? How do you exit the pattern? What should you say to answer somebody's radio call? You're gonna find all of that in the ATC, air traffic procedures. This is all gonna be found in the AIM. The AIM also has a lot of emergency and survival stuff towards the end. It's got um, it's got bird strike information. Um, it's got reporting on uh, information on like the data and history of bird strikes and stuff and recommendations. Lots of information in there that's very helpful to you. But this is a fantastic resource. Both of these are very good and now you know where it is and now you know that they're all free. This is another great thing about this online thing is if there are updates, you get you get the updates for free. You don't have to keep buying the 23 edition, the 2024, 2025, 2026, whatever edition. And you can bring all this to a check ride. I've done it, I have my students do it. This stuff all works fine. All right, we're gonna move on to the next thing now, which is the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. Again, this stuff is free. The, the next couple resources are gonna be free on the FAA website. But if you just go into Google and you type in PHAC, it will show up. Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. You download the full version or you can download a similar version. The PHAC is basically your flying textbook. It's the longest book that I'm aware of. Um, perhaps weather's longer, but I don't think so. And this this is basically like a college level, maybe not quite college level, but almost a college level um, study of airplanes. This has everything. If you're looking for airplane theory, performance information, why wh what do my flaps do? How does that how does that all work? What is what are uh, wingtip vortices? What about weight weight and balance? What's the theory behind that? You're gonna find this in the P hack. It'll tell you about how engines work, reciprocating engines, different strokes of the engine cycle. It'll tell you about weather information. It'll tell you about just all kinds of things. Scrolling down here, if we look at the table of contents, uh, we can see that there's there's all kinds of stuff. This is the kind of thing that you would go through maybe in a, in a 141 course or something like that. Um, to know all this information would put you at least at a commercial pilot level. Um, as a flight instructor, I don't know all of this stuff. You're not going to know all this stuff as a private pilot. It can be probably overwhelming as a private pilot. Don't go into it with that kind of with that kind of mindset. I would say maybe skim read. I did not read this whole thing. In fact, I probably didn't even read half of it when I became a private pilot. I don't even know if I really knew it existed. But this is a great place to go if you have questions. What if my pitot tube freezes up? Oh, I don't know. Go here. How do my six pack instruments work? Go here. It's got all that kind of information, the theory behind how your aircraft works, all that stuff. Um, a fantastic resource. If you have questions, if you're learning things, if you wanna learn about a certain system, come in here and read it. It's not gonna be specific to your airplane, but it's got great general information. 12 chapters and counting. For my edification, let me see how many chapters there are. I usually say 16. Look, 17 chapters. 17 chapters in this book. It's got everything. Okay, the next book we're looking at is the Airplane Flying Handbook. This has an FAA number, going back actually to the PHAC. The PHAC is gonna have the same thing. These FAA numbers mean that they're FAA publications. They're usually combining other regulatory information like advisory circulars, we'll come to that in a second, um, all into one little area that makes it easier for the dissemination of information. The Airplane Flying Handbook is great for your maneuvers. So when your CFI teaches you turns around a point and you don't understand a word that they are saying, come to the Airplane Flying Handbook. If they tell you how to do a short field takeoff and you're like, that doesn't sound right, or you're watching a bunch of YouTube videos on it and everybody's teaching you a different thing about how to do it, come to the Airplane Flying Handbook. The Airplane Flying Handbook tells you how to do the maneuver. It tells you your limitations. It tells you common errors. It gives you all kinds of information about why you're doing what you're doing. It talks about flying at night. What kinds of considerations should you make about flying at night? What about lights? When should you have your lights on? It talks about when to have your lights on. How should you start up your airplane? It talks about that. How should you shut down your airplane? Should you do a post-flight inspection? What should you look for in a post-flight inspection? All of that is in this reference. It's fantastic. As a flight instructor student, I studied this book meticulously because it talks about, it's got all the maneuvers. It even has maneuvers that you don't have to do for your check ride and talks about how they can be useful to build up to other maneuvers. Um, so if we wanna, if like, let's just take a look at turns around a point. Turns on point, it's got the basic theory behind it. It shows you a picture of it. A lot of these pictures too, you're gonna to find on your written tests in your check ride, the exact picture out of this out of this resource you're gonna be looking at. It might ask you questions on your written tests directly from this reference. So we're looking, we're looking at this maneuver, it tells you errors to avoid, how you should correct different things, how to set the maneuver, how do you know if you're doing it correctly. Absolutely fantastic for maneuvers, highly recommend it. If you have a question about a maneuver and you feel like you're not getting enough for flight instructor, come to this resource, the Airplane Flying Handbook. Okay, the, the last straight up FAA resource here is the Aviation Weather Handbook. There are things called advisory circulars out there. This is when the FAA determines that a certain federal aviation regulation, going back to the FARS, 
um, does not give enough information for people to actually use it super well in their day-to-day -day lives, they'll put out an advisory circular, it'll be linked to a federal aviation regulation, and it will basically dispel what they actually want you to do. So they, they give you like a, a regulation about the weather, and you're like, well, I don't know what to do about that. They give you that. They give you more information about how to do the weather, how to look for weather. This book has combined a bunch of those advisory circulars into one book. It, even, it says it right here. This handbook has combined a whole bunch of things that the FAA has put out about weather and all into one massive book. Now, again, to master this whole book would be understanding weather beyond what anybody would expect of you. But it is a fantastic resource to reference, to learn about stuff. If you're sent to go do homework and learn about how flight service stations work, or if you're interested about where does my weather come from, who's reporting all this stuff, you're gonna find it here. If you wanna know about what kind of weather what kind of weather stuff do I need for a weather briefing, you're gonna find it here. If, you're gonna learn about, if you wanna know about, if, I, if I'm trying to learn about thunderstorm avoidance, I wanna know what kind of systems there are out there, this is where you could go. You could also go to those advisory circulars at the beginning, but they, they consolidated it all here. So it's got great. But again, I wanna stress, you're looking at all this stuff. I'm looking at all this stuff. I don't know everything. You're not gonna know everything. You're not supposed to memorize this. These are not things you're supposed to memorize. Not all of it's gonna be expected, but it's a resource for learning. Again, I said, not just student pilots, but private pilots, commercial pilots, beyond that. These are resources for you to reference and learn from. Instead of, the goal here is instead of going and Googling and learning everything on forums. Because think about it, those people in the forums that, that you're having to go to or Reddit or whatever, they had to learn it somewhere as well. This is the best place to go because this is Federal Aviation, Federal Aviation um, Administration approved data, approved resources. This is where they want you to go. This is where, as a flight instructor, I'm going to send you. These are the resources you should know about. Okay, with that, the next one is the Pilot's Operating Handbook or the Aircraft Flight Manual. This is aircraft specific. I pulled a random one off the internet. You should not be using a random one off the internet for your airplane. If you are, you're doing it wrong. So an aircraft flight manual or an AFM is required um, it, by the FAA to be in your aircraft at all times when you're flying. If you've learned the aero acronym for, for stuff that should be in an airplane, airworthiness, registration, radio operator license, oh, operating limitations, that is your AFM, and then W, weight and balance. Your AFM it includes your limitations, your performance, that needs to be in the aircraft, and it's tailored to a specific end number, specific serial number. You need to have that in your airplane. Okay, is this gonna have a whole bunch of information, again, specific to your airplane, um, I'm gonna look at the table of contents here. If, as long as your airplane was built after like, I don't know, 1960 or 1970, they have very standardized table of contents is for general aviation airplanes. The airlines are also very standardized. They use their own ATA format, but we use a very standardized format here of general limitations, emergency procedures, normal performance, weight and balance, systems, handling, servicing, and supplements. I almost didn't even have to look at the thing here when I was listing them all. Um, they're gonna be very standardized. So when somebody says to go look at the weight and balance, you just know it's gonna be chapter six. If they say performance, you know it's gonna be chapter five. Um, this, is a, this is a resource for if they ask, if you're gonna be asked about systems questions on your check ride, and if you're flying an airplane, if you own an airplane, but even if you're just renting it, you should know things about how, how are my landing gears powered? If I lose my, ma if my la master switch turns off, am I still gonna have any systems? Am I gonna lose my flaps, for example, like a lot of Cessnas will? This is where you're gonna find that information. Aircraft specific, how much oil can I hold? What kind of engine do I have? And a lot of these questions are questions that you need to know as a private pilot on your check ride. So you're gonna find this booklet in, in your aircraft. Usually they put it in the, like the back seat of one of the pocket, or the back pockets of one of the seats. Um, photocopy the pages, make, make your own PDF of it. That's what I recommend. If your school has not done that, your school should do it. If they're not doing it for you though, do it yourself. Um, take pictures of the pages. Um, and just learn the system. Again, you don't have to memorize everything about your airplane. That's not the goal, but learn your systems, learn your performance, um, get an idea of how your aircraft operates. That's what you're gonna learn in the Pilot's Operating Handbook. Pilot's Operating Handbook versus AFM, two different names. After, I believe the year is 1978, something like that, the POHs now serve as AFMs in most aircraft. Before that, they, sh they might have two separate ones, but it can get kind of wishy-washy. Usually there's, there's an AFM or a POH or something listed as manual or flight operating guide or something like that. You just need to have something in there that's tailored specifically to your end number, serial number. Um, yeah, we'll move on from there. The last one is kind of several different things. This is the dynamic regulatory system. I'm gonna find this by going to drs.faa.gov. You don't have to put that in there though. Um, the, it's, a, it's a government website, it can run slow at times, but this has a lot of stuff in there. This actually has the federal aviation regulations in it, but I don't find this as easy to use as ECFR. 
so you can pull up all the parts in here but i just again this loads slow a lot of the time it's hard to find but the reason i'm bringing this up is this has airworthiness directives which are basically they're kind of like recalls when the faa determines that um that an aircraft has an issue with it like for example a common one is in cessnas the seat rails can break out of the spot and you can go sliding back on takeoff it's happened to me once before um, that's an issue that they did not see when they first made the airplane. So they put an airworthiness directive out and now you have to do seat inspection checks every certain number of hours or you have to fix the problem. There are lots of different things like that that come out and your aircraft needs to meet these requirements in order to be airworthy. So you need to make sure that you're meeting airworthiness directives. You can search for airworthiness directives on this by going to AD final rules and you put in a make like Cessna. Oops. And then if you just put in like a 172, and then you apply, you can see all the, I know, I don't know if this is all, there are some airworthiness directives that are kind of hard to find, especially if they're old, but you can see a lot, probably most of the airworthiness directives related to the Cessna. Now, as a student pilot, as a private pilot, it's not really your job to go and, uh, you know, go detail search every single AD, but you should make sure that the mechanics are doing their job and recording it in the maintenance manual. Um, typically, we'd be hoping that flight schools or owners would be doing this themselves, and you should have some confidence in wherever you're going. Um, but it's a good skill to learn, especially if you ever want to buy and own your own airplane. You're, you're responsible ultimately as the owner operator for maintaining your aircraft in an airworthy condition. So that means as a flight school, if you're flying PIC, you're responsible for making sure that it is in an airworthy condition if you're operating it, even if you don't own it. Okay, this also has air, air advisory circulars, which I mentioned earlier. You can also find these just by Googling them. But if you just go by AC number like 00, um, I don't know the exact format here, but if I do AC006, this would be on weather. Uh, I don't see it. it um, it may have been canceled, or maybe I'm not typing in the, the format right. Let's see if I do AC6515. This is a maintenance one. Um, 12. So you can, you can, find, you can find different um, ACs by going in here and searching for them, and then they'd show up in the same way. Um, and advisory circulars, as I mentioned before, if a federal aviation regulation they deem needs some more information out on it to help people understand it, they will put an AC out. Uh, to help you to help you uh, basically figure out what you're supposed to be doing with stuff. All right, so that's the end of that one. The last resource is the only one that costs money and it's a little bit different is the Private Pilot Oral Exam Guide by ASA and Michael D. Hayes. This is the 11th edition one. I am not sponsored. I don't make any money on this. I'm going to link it in the description. I'm going to put links for everything in the description. I am I'm, I'm recommending this book only because it's the only book that I bought for the, for the intention of actually studying because I got everything else for free online, and I was so glad I got this book. Um, it covers the oral portion of your check ride, so just talking, the, like the ground portion beforehand, and it's just question and answer. Question and answer, question and answer, and question and answer. And it can be very rote. The goal should not be to memorize this, but it... It helped me as a student pilot not knowing about aviation. I came in with nobody in my family as pilots, no, fa no, no, uh, I'm not a generational pilot family, and I had no idea what to expect, and this helped calm my nerves. This helped me see, okay, these are the kinds of questions that can get asked. A lot of check rate questions are scenario-based. This has some scenario-based questions at the back, but it basically, it just gives you a general idea of these are the things that you should be expected to know. You should be able to know these systems questions, these regulation questions, um, and it has some self-study questions in the back. Uh, I'm going to be putting out a video in a little bit going through some of the self-study questions in the back and helping you use these resources in this video. So uh, when that comes out, I'll probably link it somewhere. But uh, be looking out for that series if you want some more help figuring out the bold questions. I'll probably be going through 80, 90, maybe even 100% of them in some chapters to help you figure out the bold questions. And I'll be creating some of my own questions as well for you to go through the resources and try to find the answers. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful in some way. Um, I highly encourage you to, to trust the resources that the FAA has put out. Use your good judgment. And uh, if you have any questions uh, about anything or any comments, please, please put them down below. Um, get a conversation going. All right. Thank you very much for watching this video. Fly safe, everyone. Fly safe, everyone.